This video is about the mural above the Chancellor Arms at St John's. The mural above the Chancellor Arms seems to depict scenes from the local industries of the time of St John's began to be built with fishing and farming. And above it are the disciples of Christ on the left and worshippers of God on the right. And there's this divine light by the gold with reminding us that angels are in glory above. And far above the angels and archangels is the Holy Trinity. When the church was restored around 2004, much research went in the story behind the arch mural, which is one of the most prominent features of St John's. No matter where you sit, if you look up, you seem to notice something differently each time. And the mural catches the light in different time, in different ways at different times of the year and in different lights. And much of the information that I'm about to explain to you is thanks to the then Diocesan and archives, Ms Stuart Donald. So the story is that late in 1902, the wardens of St John's Church recommended that electric light was installed in the church in place of gas. Everyone agreed on the church's governing body, the vestry, that this was a good idea. But it threw up other issues that have to be taken to improve the appearance of the interior. First, gas pipes had been installed per, for the lighting, which obscured the Great East Window, so they would have to be removed. And because the gas lighting had blackened the interior, the walls of the whole church would need repainting. This was 40 years after the church had been dedicated. 40, 60 years later. So at a meeting in November 1902, the church governing body accepted a quote for Mr White of Aberdeen to clean and repaint the church. And this included a coloured design and decoration proposed by Mr White's firm of interior decorators. It's likely they enlisted the help of his artist friend and colleague, James Hector, who at that time had a flourishing reputation for both landscape and portraiture. And to 1902, James Hector produced 27 paintings that are listed by Aberdeen Art Gallery. He was a very prolific painter. Hector worked from a studio at Union Road during the first decade of the 20th century and possibly produced the mural after research into the subject and how other ecclesiastical painters treated such thematic matter. The subject of the Chancel Art Decorative Scheme is taken from the open verses of the Teum. It's a, a, an anthem and a canticle that it's sung at festivals. The design takes the form of part of what's known in the ecclesiastical terms as a glory. The perfect glory is composed of seven circles of angels surrounding the Most High. But here there's an attempt to suggest a vast expanse by showing a segment of the glory with part of the three outer circles. The cherubim and seraphim, orders of angels, are distinguishable above the angels while in the space above the main arch and serving as a frame with a more severe style decoration depicted five of the archangels. Archangel Michael being shown with a sword, Gabriel with an annunciation lily, because Gabriel is the one who announced to Mary she was pregnant with Jesus, the Son of God. Below that we have the choir of angels, their instruments separated by bands of rainbow-like cloud. Then next in order, the apostles, prophets and martyrs, those who testify to faith in God, through speech, through telling, and for those who died for their faith. And some of these are offering crowns. And then underneath, in a more realistic manner, are types of ordinary dwellers on earth. The fishermen are seen drawing in their nets, the shepherds tending the flocks, and there is a worker in the fields with a scythe in his hand. The scheme in itself aims to be rather colourful, rather than exact form or purely symbolic. And it's got beautiful colouring, it's sometimes called synthetic painting, where the harmony of the general effect and suggestion of the spirit of the subject are cleared or in close adherence to what it actually looked like. So as I said, at certain times of the day and the year, the light plays differently with this mural. And certain hours of the day, a crimson light thrown from some of the uppermost windows either in the church falls on the painted wall and the colours massively enhanced producing an entirely accidental effect, but it's a beautiful one. The painting above and around the Chancel Arch was completed in mid-summer of 1903, and when the scaffolding was removed was seen and admired by the congregation, and it's continued to be admired and valued by the congregation today. 